Hello, and uh, in this series of slides, I'm going to go through some fairly typical A-level capacity questions. Now, what I'll do is I'll introduce the question, and then I will obviously give you time to pause and have a go at it. I've got a hint section if you want some more hints, and then I'll uh, go ahead and solve it. Okay, so our very first question um, is a quite a decent size one. It's worth five marks. So straight away, this is one if you've practiced before, you'll score well at, um, because it's relatively straightforward. They are giving you an intentionally a lot of information. Um, straight away, we'd want to be identifying the fact we have a capacitor circuit. Okay, so we've got a 50 microfarad capacitor, 100 ohm resistor, 5 volt power supply. Now what they're doing to change this up and make it a little bit more in, um, higher expectations, is we're introducing a signal generator. So basically a five volt power supply that turns on and off on a, on a regular pattern, but not changing anything else. So what we're looking for here is your understanding that a signal generator is, um, in this instance, a very small power supply, and it will be turning on and off regularly. It will create a pattern. Now the power supply is marked down here on this graph for us, and shows us um, turning on and off. And you're being asked to do two things. So add the values for the time axis, okay? And sketch a graph of the potential difference across the capacitor, okay? There's two things to do there. So before you um, move on, I'm gonna do a hints section on the next page, um, but if you want to have a crack at it, and then go ahead, press pause, and have a go. Okay, so if you're watching this, you want some hints. You want somewhere to start. Well, there's always a very, very good place to start when you want to do anything, is read through the question and underline what we need. Add values to the time axes. Okay, straight away, I'm, I've taken all the other information away, and I, I spot this straight away, 20 hertz. Okay, so we need to know what the time period is. So just to remind you, time over on F, there you go. And that should tell you how off often it is turning on and off. It is already given us a nice hint down here. The time will be in milliseconds. So you'd be expected to mark up these four points. Okay, that's part one. Any capacitor question, time constant equals RC. Always do it. It's just one of those things. It'll become useful in the question somewhere. And why risk it? It takes two seconds to do. So um, you've got the value of the resistor is 100 ohms. You've got the value of the capacitor, 50 microfarads. So uh, 50 times 10 to the minus 6. Um, and you should be able to work out a time constant, please. Uh, what else what can I do for hints for you? Uh, remember that the pattern that capacitors charge and discharge. And that's probably enough for hints for the moment. So that should give you enough to start filling in here. And what I'll do is I'll go into the next slide now. So press pause if you're not ready to go ahead. And remember this is worth five marks. So it should take a little bit of time. Um, and then I will show you how I would answer the question. Okay, so I've taken away everything. I'm just putting the graph as big as I can here, and this is how I would answer this question. Straight away, I know I need to do time plus 1 over f, which you probably saw me do on the previous slide. So 1 over 20 or 50 milliseconds. So I'm going to mark these up. 50, 100, 150, 200. Okay, that's step one. The next thing I want to do is, like I said earlier, we want to do the time constant of the RC, the RC value, if you like. So I'll do this up the top. Okay, give myself some space. RC, and it was a 100 ohm resistor times a 50 microfarad capacitor. And if I get my calculator out, so prepare. I suspect 
don't know what the answer is, but I might want to guess just in case. 100 times uh, 50 times 10 to the minus 6. 1 over 200. Or 5 times 10 to the minus 3. 5 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, or I could convert that if I wanted to into seconds. 0, 5 seconds. Okay, now that's useful because we want to be looking at uh, what's going to occur every half cycle. Okay, so in a half cycle, there's going to be 25 milliseconds in a half cycle. Let's write this up here. Oh, cycle. Okay. So we, we know that there are, it for, for five time constants, so let's do 25 milliseconds, what we're looking for is five, I should say, divided by our zero point, uh, what did I say it was, 0 0.05. So uh, let's convert that, so milliseconds. So where I've got that from, just to clarify, so we already know that's a half cycle, so there's uh, 50 milliseconds per cycle, so a half cycle is going to be 25. And I want to do, sorry, 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.005, which we got from over here, and that will give us five cycles, five time constants. And I'll put TCs up here. TCs, five time constants. Now, the reason why they're doing that, they're looking for understanding that you um, obviously taking away the the fact that there they said there was a negligible uh, resistance. So, do you understand how a capacitor would fit in this circle? Now, in this instance, it would be a very very well matched circuit if this was a real scenario. Um, so, what we need to do is we need to now draw in a um, charging curve and a discharging curve. Now, the capacitor will only charge when there's positive voltage, so we're only going to be starting at this point here. We, we know it's going to charge, fully charge, if you like, five time constant, within our 50 millisecond cycle. So we need to draw something that looks a little like this, and it's going to charge up to here, Right, to there. So, lovely charge, it's going to charge exactly in the period that the voltage is positive. Now, obviously, once the voltage drops off, there's still a resistance in the circuit, it's going to start discharging. And what you'd be looking for here is a high rate of discharge to start with. And down into here. Now, it did say, I'm pretty sure it said, there had to be two cycles. I'm not going to take the risk because I'm pretty sure it's two cycles. So I can't flip back on the screen to double check. And I'm going to draw a second one in anyway. Doesn't hurt to go overboard sometimes. And, uh, okay, now just remember a charge discharge curve on a capacitor looks a little bit like a wave breaking on the shore. Um, make sure it looks exponential. So this is how I'd solve that. Um, I think I'll be on this side for, oh, just coming up five minutes. It's worth five marks, so I'm about on track. Okay, so there's a couple of things I have to be a bit careful in. Um, recognizing that the two cycles was going to be over 100 milliseconds. Um, a half cycle was 0 0.025 because a full cycle is 50. So I'm getting my time constant by dividing my half cycle by my 0 0.05 that I calculated for an RC value. So hopefully that's uh, what you got, um, and then we'll go on to the next question. Okay, so moving on to a new question, and I've uh, grabbed this out of the middle of a, a bigger question. Um, and this will a question like this will always be part of a bigger question, and it almost always disproportionately awarded marks. This is worth three marks. I'm pretty sure, and I solved this, I'm pretty sure I could draw this in under a minute. So that's a bit of a gimme. So, but consequently, we need to make sure we're getting it right. So um, I'm going to 
give you a second to pause this. So read through it, um, and on the diagram, so you could just draw your own diagram from scratch, it wouldn't take you very long. Direction of the field lines, and the lines of equipotential. Now that one takes a little bit more thinking about. Um, I think you probably find that's worth the two marks, and the direction of the field lines are worth one. So there you go, all you hit to one side here. So pause now, and I'll solve it on the uh, next slide when we move on. Okay, first thing I'm going to do when I get a question like this is I'm going to identify positive and negative very carefully. My negatives are going to be heading in, and I'm going to draw on every single one. Why? Because I don't like taking the risk, and there's no need to. Okay. Okay, uh, my positives are going out. Field line, but it's okay. So I've just drawn arrows everywhere. So anyone in marking this is going to be on no uncertain terms. Now I could, if I was going to be really particular, because they're joined up. Okay, I'm going to be even more thorough. Now, if you make a mistake using a pencil, it's obviously easy to fix. I wouldn't bother doing this if I was using a pen and I couldn't rub it out. But straight away, I've identified a way of improving this because it would have been faster in the exam. But that comes down to practice. So there you go, one mark, one out of three. Obviously, rubbing it out and doing the middle bit again took me a little bit longer. Now, equipotential lines, a line where the potential is equal. So around our, it's around our negative charge, it's going to be pretty much a perfect circle. So let me, let's just do a dashed line, usually indicated by a dashed line, and you'll notice it's pretty much perpendicular to each of the lines it goes through. So there's a right angle in each one of these, okay? Now we need to do the same for the positive, and it's important that you don't show them touching. There's our second line. Again, they're 90 degrees to each one, so it should be almost a perfect circle. Not quite, but it's close. Okay, there's two. And of course, the last one, because we're between two charges, will be across the middle. So I've probably not had myself much space here. There you go. So, three marks. Uh, and I reckon if you had practiced that before, maximum 30 seconds to draw that. You just go and make sure you don't make any silly mistakes. Right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this question that we've just solved on the previous one is now being expanded upon. Um, I think this is completely weighted the wrong way, but this is just, it's a straightforward question in a sense, but it's only worth two marks, and I thought the previous one being worth three, that makes it a little unweighted, but it's a relatively straightforward one. You need to find an equation. You need to solve it. So there's your hints. So it's, it's a straightforward equation to solve, which is probably why it's only worth two marks. So I'll do that on the next slide. So have, pause it, please, and have a crack at it. Okay, so straight away, um, I hope that you've had a go at this. I'm going to be finding my equation from the back of the sheet. So I need the constant. I've got two charges, Q1 and Q2, and my radius squared. Most often forgotten part, the radius being squared. So now it's all about just substituting straight in. Um, so let's do that in one line. So we've got 8.99 times 10 to the 9. And then we've just got to drop in our numbers. So we've got uh, 0 0.1 times 10 to the minus 6. It is so important you know your prefixes, guys. It will speed you up no end. Um, and it's times two, so I'll tell you what, I'll write it out in total. One times 10 to the minus six. I could have just done it squared. Um, and then we just got to divide all of that by the radius between them, uh, which is, there we go, in meters. Don't forget in meters. 0 0.05 squared. There we go. Now, I've put all that in my calculator. 
basically you're just this is where you guys are faster at this than I am. Why not nine times two to the nine? Oh, just done that. Let's take it again. It's two to the nine. Um, I will do it in brackets because one point six. Check it works. Comes ten to the minus six squared. Again, that looks right to me. Uh, zero point zero five squared equals. Okay, so I've got equals 0 0.03596. Show that the force is approximately 0 0.4. So approximately 0 0.04 newtons. I should unit that as well. Okay, these are obviously show it is about. Um, can accidentally lead you into guessing towards the answer. Um, if you get an answer that, that is not about 0 0.04, you have made a mistake somewhere and it is worth checking. So I'm fairly confident that's correct based on the fact that I'm pretty close to what they were suggesting it was about. And if you've not seen that before, shorthand for approximate. Um, that for two marks, relatively straightforward. Um, that will again just be with practice, just knowing straight away what equation you're looking for and dropping the numbers in. Let's move on. Right now, okay, this is, uh, we're getting into the nuts and bolts of capacity questions here. Um, there is two ways of solving this question, so have a quick read of it. Okay, so it's completely back to front. You'd never be working out the capacitor, capacitance of a capacitor by using the graph, because you would think you would just have a look at what the capacitor was. We'll measure it. Um, but we're a physicist and we're expected to be able to go in both directions. So you've got a couple of choices here. You can either find the tangent to the curve. So this is one way. Um, or you can use, and I'll give it out as a Q0 e to the minus TRC. Okay, you've got two choices, one or two. Um, I have a leaning towards preference for using the second one. I think inaccuracies can be a little bit of a problem, but I will give both examples on the next screen. So hit pause, have a go at it, and see what you can find, please. And I will give you a hint that the answer is approximately 0 0.02 milli. So it's got a big capacitor, many farads. So if you get that, great. Um, but if you don't, then at least you've got the way I'll try and solve it both ways on the next slide, please. Okay, so uh, the first one was uh, if you draw a tangent to the curve. Um, now, in interest of transparency, I can't draw a tangent to the curve on my screen with a ruler. Um, so I did do a little bit of cheat and look up what the marking scheme allowed for. Um, and that's for two reasons. One, I wanted to sort of draw it in. And two, I wanted to show you why this is perhaps not the greatest idea. So this is meant to be a tangent to the curve. It's meant to be a straight line. It's incredibly hard to do on a scratch pad. Um, and here we go. And it should have come out at, I'll call it 18 milliseconds. Now, they did give a scope of 0 0.17. Uh, to 0 0.19 milliseconds. So that's pretty borderline in terms of um, what's really available to, to, to make the difference there. So if you were to make an even slight mistake there, you could find yourself not scoring particularly well. But anyway, you've got your, um, your time value, so time equals RC, so time period, and we just rearrange it, so C, would equal t over r so we did 0 0.18 so i'll pick the middle of the ground one our resistance is 900 and if i put that in my calculator that's where i should have written down what the answer was 0.18 divided by 900 and there we go 0 0.002 that's 0 
zero two millifarads. Okay, so that's doing graphically relatively quick, but there's a little bit of risk creeps in. My second more favorite way is to do this mathematically. Um, and essentially all you need to do is identify Q0, which is for our purposes, we're going to use seven, which it is, we go through seven almost spot on. Um, and then all you're going to do is find another corresponding point in the graph. And the really obvious one is right in the middle here, 10 milliseconds, and it's at four milli uh, millicoulombs. So let's put that, plug that straight in. So, well, we can't plug that straight in. First things first, identify the equation you're going to use. So Q equals Q zero E minus T R C. Um, this just comes with practice, guys. You just need to go and rearrange this equation comfortably. I usually recommend just times everything by natural logarithm. Um, it does tend to make everything easier to move around. So Q L N Q zero plus L N I always forget whether I'm doing this from right at this stage. Yep, that's right. I'm going to have minus T R C. So these two cancel each other out. So I end up with minus T because I've also got my negative there. So L N Q, L N Q zero minus T over R C. So what I'm trying to do now is isolate C to itself. Um, very simply put, if I just do a quick rearrangement there, I'm going to end up with, let's just do it in two steps to make sure we don't lose anybody. T over RC equals LN Q zero minus LN Q. And straight away I can just do a straight swap. So let's have T over R. Ln q zero minus ln q in brackets is going to equal c, and now we just drop numbers in. So time was what did we say it was minus ten. Oh, ooh, don't get caught by that. Nearly did minus zero point zero one. Not minus. Sorry, I'll put a plus sign there. Not minus. We got rid of that. Uh, Nine hundred times uh, ln q0 was 7 minus ln q was 4 okay uh, I've just realized mistake I've made there you go see none of this is perfect it's in milli okay so 7 times, I'm going to squeeze it in, sorry, because it's rewriting, it's going to be a pain in the backside, times 10 to the minus 3, and if I put that on my calculator, which is probably again going to take me twice as long as you guys, uh, 0 0.01, 900 brackets, uh, logarithm, zero. Uh, let's do 7 times 10 to the minus 3, and it's a minus, Logarithm 4 times 10 to the minus 3 brackets brackets shut. There we go. Nice, lovely answer. And I've got nowhere to put it. Um, so, capacitance I've got uh, 1.98 times 10 to the minus 5. So that comes out at let's call that 98. Five, so that's one. Uh, we'll keep it in millifarad so we can compare it to the other one. So zero point. Oh, I'm slightly off the screen. Sorry. One nine eight millifarads. There we go. So uh, there we go. That's pretty much. That's nine eight five. I feel like I've. I may have have a typo there. So you might tell me where I've made my mistake. I'm not entirely sure why. I'm slightly skewed, but it might have been my typo going in. So, there you go, guys. That's how I'd solve that mathematically. And again, straightforward process, and you end up with a fairly solid answer that doesn't rely on you using a ruler and making a mistake. It takes a little bit longer, 
but remember this is worth four marks so it's not worth rushing and trying to find easy ways if you are someone who's really struggling with this then of course this is a good option but it's a bit of a back to front question you wouldn't normally find a capacitor based on its curve so I'll leave it there and uh, good luck and I hope you've practiced and if you know that there's any that you particularly struggle with those are the ones you need to find the questions on and practice more good luck